We all face such situations. We come across some source code and wonder, isn't this a bug or should it really be like that? My favorite, the link your extension method first or default. It always makes me ask, why first? Why not second or third? Is default really intended? Should it actually be single? I cannot avoid this. So let's fix this. Using a concept called design by contract. Looking at Wikipedia, we learned that the term was coined in the context of the Eiffel programming language starting 1986, so it's pretty old. The key idea is to use preconditions, postconditions and invariants in the source code to define in detail the contract between the caller of an API and the API itself. So let's apply this concept to this code. We say contract requires not null input. And we give the name of the input variable. And we also say contract requires input has at least one element input. And we need a nice message requires to have at least one element. So how is this related to clean code? Well, even if designed by contract was focusing on contract specification when it was introduced, which is pretty valuable because it allows us to detect misuse pretty fast, I see another and even bigger value in it. It can serve as executable documentation in the source code itself, which makes assumptions and expectations crystal clear and by that support clean code as well. Let's look at this example. Can you spot all the assumptions made? So obviously the method over here expects that the configuration is not null and also expects that my repository is not null. So let's add some preconditions here. First one, contract requires not null repository name of repository. And add the second one for the configuration. Looking closer, we see that probably pattern should also not be null. So let's add another contract here. Contract requires pattern to be not null. Pattern is expected to be not null. And we could even add a post condition here to make our assumptions clear. Like this, contract ensures this return value here should be greater than minus one. Return value should have a positive value. Now this is explicit and expressive code. This is clean code. There is another case where design by contract is pretty powerful. Did you ever wrote code using some library or dealing with some external system and you were not 100% sure how this library or system behaves in all cases? Here's an example. In one of my projects, we implemented a very basic custom dependency injection container. Initially, we could just register some implementation for some interface and resolve it somewhere else. Later, we wanted to support extensions as well. While the implementation for registering and resolving single instances was pretty straightforward, the implementation for extensions required reflection and so was a bit tricky. So here's the implementation. We first try to find all instances providing extension points, which are properties decorated with extension point attribute. Secondly, we find all instances assignable to the property type. And third, we inject all found extensions into the extension point. During the implementation, we discovered that handling all the cases would be pretty complex. So we decided to accept limitations and make assumptions during the implementation. But how could we express those decisions in the code? At least we could leave a comment, but there's a better way to do it. Let's use contracts again. Let's add a first contract which defines that an extension point has to have a return value of i enumerable of t. Let's add another contract which defines that an extension point must have either a public setter or an explicit defined private setter. True read-only properties are not supported. And the last one which states that we only support simple containers with a single type, for example dictionaries are not allowed. Now the limitations and our assumptions are pretty clear documented in the code and if the assumption is not met we get a proper exception. Then we have an example from which we can learn and improve the code further. 
And sometimes there are expectations, means you are very clear what you expect, how your code should be used. So in this case, for example, we expect that the assembly and the name are not null and also not be empty strings. But do you remember that this was a clear expectation one month later, six months later? Do you remember your peers? You got the point. So let's make those expectations clear as well by adding two more contracts saying neither null nor the empty string is allowed. Now that we know the benefits of design by contract and how to use it, how do we implement it in our projects? As usual, there are many possibilities. One would be post sharp. Another one would be Microsoft code contracts, which was a research project, which is meanwhile open source. But actually my recommendation would be keep it simple. I used to have a small class, which I even copy into my projects. The link to the simple implementation of design by contract can be found in the description below the video. So assumptions aren't that bad in source code if and only if those are made explicit. And we have seen achieving this is simple, it is effective, so go and use it. See you in the next video.